Good evening. The battle for the federal seat of Gilmore is heating up. Former MP Andrew Constance will take on Labor's long-serving Fiona Phillips after he was endorsed as the Liberal candidate. We have a big job ahead of us in terms of where our community is at and the issues that the community is facing. You know, it's a community that's fed up to the back teeth in terms of politics. It's a community that just expects to be unified. Last year, he announced he would step away from state politics. More than a thousand COVID cases have been recorded overnight across the Illawarra Shellhaven district. All results were gathered from PCR tests with positive rapid antigen results not being counted locally, only by New South Wales Health. And hazardous surf warnings remain in place along the south coast despite the tsunami alert being cancelled. Good evening as central workers will be the first in line across the southwest as 3 million rapid antigen tests land in Victoria. Those with a serious illness will also be prioritised with another 41 million rats on the way. Ballarat has the highest case rate in regional Victoria with another 211 new infections overnight. The free rat program has already alleviated pressure on local testing clinics. From midnight tomorrow, more critical workers from Otway to the Wimmera will be eligible for a quarantine exemption. It includes workers in emergency services, education, transport and freight who are caught up as close contacts. To be eligible, both you and your employer must agree to the exemption. The worker must also return a negative daily rapid antigen test for the first five days. Mostly sunny for Neil. Good evening. Local pharmacies across the region say they haven't been told yet if they'll receive any of the state government's new batch of rapid antigen tests. It comes as a number of Bendigo pharmacies are appealing for more stock with demand only increasing. The state government has today begun distributing the 3 million tests to essential workers in healthcare, emergency services and disability and aged care services. Another 41 million are on order. In other news, CFA stations across central Victoria, including Seymour, Janerton and Inglewood, will be among the first 20 to receive new vehicles. The $126 million state government fund is set to ensure volunteer firefighters are well equipped with state-of-the-art supplies. The rollout will be completed by next year. Partly cloudy and heading for a top of 23 for Castlemaine. Good evening. A woman in her 50s has died of COVID at Canberra Hospital. The death toll from the pandemic is now 19. 52 people are in hospital while four are on a ventilator. There were 1,601 cases recorded as well today. That number includes both rapid and PCR tests. Meanwhile, the Holt PCR testing site was closed again due to supply issues. We're being reminded to keep an eye on ACT health updates to tell us when clinics are open and if they're operating at reduced hours. The Canbar drive through site is also only distributing rapid antigen tests to those who need them. And Ginny Stevens is this year's Snowy Monero Australia Day ambassador. She'll be giving the address at the Jindabyne and Cooma ceremony. She's founded Active Farmers, which helps improve the health fitness of our primary producers. Good evening. Thousands of rapid antigen tests are on their way to essential workers in Gippsland following the first major delivery in a government bulk order. However, East Gippsland member Tim Bull says the state government should have foreseen the shortages and ordered earlier. From tomorrow, three million free tests are expected to be distributed in healthcare, emergency services and aged care settings. An additional 41 million are expected to hit our shores in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, 180 COVID cases were detected across Gippsland overnight. There are currently more than 3,000 active infections being managed by the local health unit. And the Erica Country Expo was a roaring success, with hundreds flocking to check out music, rides and stalls at the weekend. All profits raised by ticket sales will go towards helping local community bring back tourists. Good evening, a Newcastle woman in her 90s has sadly died of COVID. She's one of 17 deaths reported today. More than 1,300 new cases have been recorded across the Hunter New England, a fraction of the more than 29,000 new infections across the state. 
Major events and festivals across the Hunter, which have been disrupted by COVID, are getting a lifeline. The $43 million fund will provide financial security to organisers to keep delivering events, which are key drivers behind tourism to the region. And a hazardous surf warning is still in place for the Hunter Coast due to ex-tropical cyclone Cody. The storm is expected to cause dangerous conditions for most of the New South Wales coastline. With the underwater volcanic eruption near Tonga still causing rough seas, beachgoers are advised to stay out of the water until it's safe.